ITS has seven faculties with prospective scientific fields, including Scientics, INSIS, Vocation, Creatives, MarTech, Electics, Plan ITS is a space for the new generation who are hungry for knowledge because it provides a wide range of references in both physical and digital form. ITS makes it easier for the new generation to access information by providing flexible classes. ITS keeps moving forward in facing future challenges by providing the best facilities for the new generation's activities. The facilities support both spiritual and physical needs. ITS also provides research facilities in the ITS Science Techno Park, including ICT and Robotics, Automotive, Maritime, and Creative Industries. Therefore, the excellent generations from ITS will emerge and make history. ITS is a space for the new generation to express themselves. ITS is a place where the new generation learns new things and finds their purpose. ITS has become a place where the new generations that carry the future will be born. ITS it's a campus of science and technology, which focuses on the research and innovation, presenting technology for prosperity. With a spirit of heroism, ITS brings the future before us. ITS, the University of Heroes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the guest lecture series on SDGs today, Wednesday, 10 March 2021. First of all, uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Aulia from ITS Global Engagement and will be your Master of Ceremony this afternoon. Thank you for joining our guest lecture series on SDGs today. Before we start our agenda, let me inform you some rules for this event. First, please fill your attendance at bit.ly slash attendance underscore GLS SDGs. And our committee also send the attendance link in the Zoom chat room. And the second, participants who wish to ask question during the Q&A session, please send your question to the link that also listed on the Zoom chat. Or you can ask directly by clicking the raise hand feature. Okay, for today's lecture theme, our meeting the need for cardiovascular care in low and middle income countries, healthy digital dividends, which will be delivered by our speakers, Dr. Gindo Tampubolon from University of Manchester and Dr. Joko Perwanto from ITS. 
and the lecture will be moderated by Dr. Adi Dharma from ITS. Before we start our agenda, allow me to tell you for our schedule today as follow. First, lecture from Dr. Gindo followed by Q&A session. And the second, lecture from Dr. Joko followed by Q&A session. The third is certificate awarding and the fourth is closing. Okay, before we proceed to the lecture, let me introduce our moderator today. So the moderator today is Dr. Adi Dharma. Dr. Adi, how are you? Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon, Aulia, everybody. Good afternoon. Okay, uh, thank are, you so much. We are fine. Okay, so Dr. Adi has a degree from University of Groningen, Netherlands, and also from ITS. See, he has some research field in biomedical engineering application. Okay, without further ado, let me proceed to the next agenda. For Dr. Adi, the time is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Um, MC, Master of Ceremony, Aulia. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Kindo and uh, yeah. Dr. Joko Purwanto. I hope everybody is doing well today uh, because we are going to have a, a great day for today's activity. Uh, so how is it, uh, Dr. Kindo? It's a bit cold here, but I'm fine. Okay. Uh, how, how cold is it uh, today? Um, it's not too bad, actually. It's, I think it's about five, but uh, it's the beginning of spring. So I look forward okay. to more heat in the okay. day. Okay. Five, five degrees is, uh, is yes. not too bad for you. Eh? But no, for no. us, it's a terrible uh, <laughs> degrees of Celsius. <laughs> five degrees uh, can be a problem uh, for most of us here. Okay, uh, we would like to say hello to Dr. Joko Purwanto. How is it, Dr. Joko Purwanto? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Adi. I am fine today. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, okay, uh, first of all, I would like to read the curriculum vitae of Dr. Gindo. Maybe we can uh, uh, set back the, uh, yeah, okay. So uh, first of all, I would like to read uh, the curriculum vitae of uh, full name, Dr. Gindo Tampu Bolon uh, from the University of Manchester without any United, yeah, uh, Dr. Gindo. University of Manchester United, it's gonna be like different thing. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Gindo is now a lecturer in poverty at the Global Development Institute. Uh, Deputy Director Rory and Elizabeth Brook, uh, Doctoral College. Deputy Director MSc Program in International Development, previous day on research in spring 2009 and 2012 at the Harvard School of Public. Uh, what a, a quite a interesting experience, uh, uh, Dr. Gindo. And his specific research interests uh, are a scale up of primary care intervention for cardiovascular risk management in Indonesia, public research units uh, on older people and frailty, Manchester and Newcastle, and uh, fund, funded uh, approximately 4.9 million pounds sterling, wow, uh, from the National Institute of Health Research. Uh, and combined impact of dementia, age-related hearing and vision impairment, sense, uh, sense cognition, maybe is it? And then, yes. Sorry, it it is blocked by uh, text pop up. Uh, yeah, okay. Promoting health of our eyes. So uh, that is a, a quite a very interesting experience and. Uh, uh, competence uh, from Dr. Gindo. Uh, we can uh, we can get more explanation from him uh, after this. Uh, the second speaker I would like to introduce is uh, Dr. Joko Purwanto from Research Center of Artificial Intelligence and Health Technology, uh, ITS. Uh, his 
educational educational background uh, from bachelor program from Department of Electrical Engineering ITS. Uh, graduated in 1989 and then uh, he continued his study for master program uh, in the same department electrical engineering from Keio University Japan and graduated in 1999 and then uh, he continued directly his study for post uh, for doctoral degree and uh, in the same departments uh, from the electrical engineering department Keio University Japan and graduated in 2002. So Dr. Joko is uh, quite uh, very linear in from the bachelor to doctoral degree in electrical engineering. <clears throat> His current research topics uh, are perceptions, control, and planning for soccer hill robots, advanced navigation for multifunction mobile robots platform using social force model, Developments of speech recognition for a multifunction mobile robot platform. Development of navigation system for self-driving cars. And then now the, his research interests are robotics, automation, artificial intelligence, and autonomous vehicle. So that's a, a quite an expert uh, we can see from the curriculum vitae from both speakers today. <coughs> So, okay, according to the schedule, the, the first speaker, uh, the speaker will be Dr. Gindo Tampu Bolon. Uh, if you are ready, then uh, maybe the committee will set the screen with the PPT from Dr. Gindo. Uh, yes, um, you can go ahead or I have my PowerPoint slide if you want me to share my screen. Okay, so it would be better if maybe you can share it by yourself, Dr. Gindo, so then you can manage it freely. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah, you okay, very so much, then, Dr. Uh, Adi. Times and floors uh, is yours, Dr. Gindo. Thank you very much, Dr. Adi and uh, Dr. Joko. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, to be invited by um, Ibu Reni and uh, colleagues at Surabaya. By now, you probably know that I I am... Um, uh, an Indonesian, and I still hold my Indonesian passport. Although most <laughs> of my work is um, funded by the UK government, and uh, I do a little bit of work in Indonesia, especially in Malang, which I'm going to share with you today. I hope you can all see that. Uh, yes, it is okay. Clear. Yeah, okay. Um, so what I'm going to share with you in the next half an hour or so is the work that we started a few years ago. Um, can I just double check that you can hear me clearly or is there an echo in my voice? No, it is uh, very clear, Dr. Gindo. Okay, good. Um, we started this work uh, a few years ago, and it was actually one of my PhD students from Malang. Um, and she now stayed with me doing postdoctoral work here, advising the British government. But uh, it was a work that for the first time in Indonesia established that there is a huge need for cardiovascular management in Indonesia. And that need was not met. So a lot of people in Indonesia um, suffer and died from what you call in Indonesia, angin duduk. Basically it's um, cardiovascular death. Or if you talk to almost anyone in Indonesia age 40 and onwards, you are likely to find them complaining about um, high blood pressure, diabetes, or if they are 50s or so, your friends or your relatives or your parents' relatives, it is not uncommon to receive news that they die of cardiovascular diseases or stroke or heart attack or anginduduk. And so there is a, 
real need for understanding cardiovascular risk in Indonesia, cardiovascular disease risk in Indonesia, and managing that. So, so that's the impetus for this work. We wrote it in a paper back in 2014. As I mentioned, uh, a PhD student of mine, she was from Brawijaya and was training to be my PhD student then in Manchester. And we wrote the unmet needs for cardiovascular care in Indonesia. We work with some sample uh, from blood drawn from about 5,000 Indonesians. And there is one protein in the blood that I am very familiar with from my work in, in Britain and in America. And that's what is new about that, uh, this piece of paper where we established the need for cardiovascular care in Indonesia and the fact that that need was not met. And there is another issue that made it difficult to meet that cardiovascular care need in Indonesia, which is the spatial disparity. Indonesia, as you all know, is an archipelago. Um, and I actually hailed from here, from North Sumatra. By now, you probably uh, guessed it. And any map that you see on Indonesia, you can easily find spatial disparity or spatial inequality. And you can see, for instance, here, we raised um, and mapped the issue of spatial disparity in number of physicians. Or you can take any other um, measures number of beds in hospital, number of nurses. Uh, and this particular one is number of physicians. And when you see this disparity, uh, most of them are concentrated in Java, as you know, then you can guess that meeting the need of cardiovascular care throughout Indonesia is going to be difficult because of the disparity. So we established the magnitude of the risk and by implication, the magnitude of the need and also the magnitude of the unmet need. So on the left, you can see that as people get older, um, then their risk of dying from cardiovascular events, heart attack, angina, angin duduk, and so on, within the next 10 years, follow that gradient on the left. Yeah. So typically in Indonesia, when you are age 40 to 50, there's one in five chances that within 10 years, you're going to die of cardiovascular death, stroke, and related conditions. If you are 50s and older, um, there's quite a steep increase and so on. And we also look at men and women, yeah? But those are the risk. Those are the risk. That's not fate. Bukan nasib, bukan kodrat. So those are the risk. And therefore, something can be done about it. And if nothing is done about it, that's what we call unmet needs. So if you are not given statin, if you do not quit smoking, if you do not change your lifestyle, then that risk can lead to death. But if something is done, then that risk and the implication, the need to avoid death, that need can be met. But if it is not, then the risk is there and can be fatal. And so for people age 40s to 50s, it's about 60%. You can see here it's 60%, it's the same scale. Actually, uh, the scale is on the right, but it is hidden from you maybe uh, because of the uh, screen on, on the right is covered, but it's about 60%. So unmet need for cardiovascular care is about 60% for people age 40s, for people age 50s, for people age 60s. 
I hope that's clear on 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 this two plots. Yeah. And and you can see it in the paper that I cited earlier. Now, um, we also look at not only men and women, but also urban and rural. Uh, what is interesting here is uh, if I go straight to to the right here, the risk is higher in rural areas. So by now you may guess where will my research go based on this evidence. Uh, I'm interested in the rural areas. Okay, um, so this is um, showing that if we look at those who have their, meet, their, their needs met, those who have access to statin, those who have access to healthcare to deal with their cardiovascular risk, then you can see that it depends on their wealth or incomes or their economic status. This is per capita expenditure. Um, the horizontal axis. So the richer they are, the higher their probability of meeting their needs, which is not surprising, but nonetheless important to know the gradient, that it is pretty steep indeed. Yeah. And also you can see that people who live in urban areas, their meet, uh, their needs are likely met because as you have seen earlier, the spatial disparity, you see that doctors are available in urban areas, hospitals are available in urban areas relative to rural areas, yeah? And uh, that was in 2014, we established that there is such a need and we established that the need is not met and people are dying needlessly. Uh, in, in Britain, we have a term called um, unnecessary deaths, and quite a lot of that happening in Indonesia. As I mentioned earlier, my focus then goes deeper into the rural area, because I have established that the risk is higher and unmet in rural areas compared to urban areas. So, so this is the one that we are doing. Uh, we did it in 2016, 2018, 2018 um, in Kabupaten Malang, in many villages there. So we looked again at cardiovascular disease risk factor prevalence, and um, uh, this is part of the study called Smart Health, with a group of people, as you can see here, uh, which I want to acknowledge at the same time. Yeah. So Asri uh, stayed with me in Manchester. Uh, Masiaro is uh, my former PhD student, um, and um, Praveen Delfak was from Surabaya, Erlanga, but he's now a professor here at Manchester, and uh, Anushka from, from Sydney. And she's the lead uh, in this um, research. So we, we went to uh, eight villages in Malang, Four of them are treatment villages. Four of them are control villages. I will tell you a little bit more about the treatment. I will tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, it's a complex uh, treatment. It's a complex intervention. Um, and um, these are the villages. Sidurahayu, Karangduren, Kepanjen, Sepanjang, Majang Tengah, Tempoko Mulyo, Kendal Payak, sama, uh, and Mendalang Wangi. Yeah. Um, If we look at the situation in, in rural Indonesia, um, it's, it's quite striking that um, uh, in rural areas, that's the yellow one, that's uh, what I'm most interested in, uh, the rightmost bar in each block. Um, there's quite a, quite a lot of them are actually at high risk of cardiovascular death including in the villages. 
And one of the things that um, can explain that maybe, especially in East Java, is a lot of um, uh, public rokok around uh, villages in, in Java, in, in East Java. So, so that's why the risk of cardiovascular death is quite high in rural areas, certainly higher than I had expected. I would have expected it higher in, in urban areas and, and much lower in rural areas. But part of the reason maybe is because in East Java in particular, in the villages, you have small uh, public rokok um, in, in many places. So um, one part of the complex intervention that I mentioned earlier, one part of the complex intervention, because this is Institute of Technology School in November, so I, I erased this part. Um, uh, I do not emphasize the other parts. Um, so we have a, a, a smart health program centered around an app that we put onto an Android device um, that can be used. It was designed by Kader Posyandu. The important thing about this is um, the important thing about this is Kadar Posyandu tend to be not very highly educated. They are not university graduates. So high school graduates in the villages. Um, we put the apps in their hands and we train them. Uh, we train them a lot of things. One of them is to draw blood. So Kadar Posyandu in our program of Smart Health are trained to draw blood and to read information from what's in the blood and put it into our system such that, I'll show you a little bit more later about uh, the screens later towards the end, such that the apps will tell Kadar whether that person in front of her, uh, usually Kader, but not all, usually Kader is a woman. So uh, forgive me if I use uh, the term her. Um, the person in front of her, uh, whether the person is at risk of death from cardiovascular disease or not. I'll show you later the level of risk. We use traffic light system level of risk, yellow, red or green, yeah, quite familiar in Indonesia. But the point here is we train Kader high school graduates. They are not university graduates. We train them to draw blood so that they can read information in the blood and we put them into the system, an app, um, which I'll show you later. And the app has a lot of things, um, if I can, Can you all see number three? Decision support to the top right, yeah? Can you see my cursor? Yes. We yeah, can see okay. So, so we have a decision support in, in the app as well that can tell straight away whether the person in front of her has low risk, green, or has medium risk, yellow, amber, or has high risk, red, yeah? And um, we feed this into the cloud and doctors later on can look at this and decide on whether that person requires certain drugs, whether that person requires referral to hospitals and so on, yeah? Um, one last thing that I, this is complex, but I'm not going to, to uh, give you all the detail. One last thing that is important here is that because the Kader lives in the villages themselves, the person doesn't need to go anywhere, doesn't need to go to the hospital, doesn't need to go to the Puskasmas. And that is critical in villages in Indonesia because the hospital can be half an hour away or the Puskasmas can be uh, three hours away. Um, the purpose 
I showed you very early on the spatial disparity in Indonesia drives the design because not many places in Indonesia have good access to doctors and puskesmas. We designed this system such that the cadre who lives in the villages themselves holds the key to the intervention such that the person, penduduk, does not need to go anywhere. So this is the first point here, at home screening. They don't need to go to puskesmas, they don't need to go to the hospital. And in Indonesia, that's critical. Um, we went further. As you probably know, there are lots of um, intervention, technological interventions in Indonesia that are useless. Um, five years later, no one used them. That's what I mean by that. Uh, so we ran a randomized trial to see whether indeed people who are served by this treatment actually live longer. Because technology can promise a lot of things. The key is whether indeed that promise is met. Yeah. So we, we look at um, uh, a randomized intervention. The intervention is the treatment that I explained to you earlier. And whether after more than a year, Penduduk or people in those villages actually um, have their cardiovascular risk of death decreased. That's what we want. And we did find that. I'm not going to read you into uh, to read you the details of all that, but that's what we found. Now, uh, for those of you who have, who have access to JAMA, Journal of American Medical Association Cardiology, uh, you can see the top right here. Invited commentary. And um, these are people who read this and they are not our friends. These are people, it turns out that they are cardiologists from the US who look at all these things, uh, who look at all kinds of um, treatment or interventions uh, using mobile phones uh, to meet cardiovascular disease uh, care. And they look at three in particular. One of course is ours and one in India and one in China. The one in India didn't work, the one in China didn't work. This one worked. So that's another way of saying that lots of technological intervention, but whether that intervention work is something else altogether. And we try to establish that with randomized or quasi-randomized trial. So, so here are some of the details. If people want to uh, read about them, um, uh, Having done that, now this is the last part of my talk, having established that the mobile phone technology intervention that we designed and put in the hands of Kader and let them use it at home in the villages, having established that that actually reduces the risk of death, then we want to find out whether that intervention can be scaled up from Malang to all the 514 kabupaten and kota throughout Indonesia. Yeah? So as scientists, we work very carefully. That's how we work in, in, in Britain. We work very carefully. We establish that it works in Malang, and we ask ourselves whether it will work throughout Indonesia, scaling up. Actually, we ask whether it will work just in East Java. No, actually, we ask whether it will work just in Malam. Yeah. And one way to, to persuade people that it might work in the broader setting, it might work when we scale it up 
one way to persuade people is to establish whether it is cost effective. So it's not only technological intervention. So that's the key. Um, lots of technological interventions in Indonesia, many of them are useless, are not used five years later. One way to make sure of that is to ask ourselves whether it's cost effective. So we did a cost effective analysis of that mobile technology uh, intervention in order to tell Bupati, Wali Kota, uh, Dirjen, Director, whether they should consider this. Because if it's not cost effective, it is more expensive than ignoring it. No one should be doing this. And it is better if we find out very soon. So we did that. So here is roughly um, the result. The, the point here is simply, I'm, uh, I'm not going into the details of that. One that I will explain is on the horizontal axis is the dollar value that you are willing to pay to prevent death in the next year. So willingness to pay per death or, or something worse than death is disabled, severely disabled. Some people say that I'd rather die than being disabled in this way. So, so that's what it means by willingness to pay per, let's say death averted. So here is about $4,000. Yeah, and here's about $7,500. Um, if you are a, a YouTube influencer, of course, uh, you can spend $7,500 uh, to prevent death next year. But if you are not a YouTube influencer, namely, you haven't got that much money, maybe you can only spare $1,500 to avert. Yeah. So this is willingness to pay how much you are willing to pay, and people are willing to pay differently. And this is um, the probability that it is effective for the population, yeah? not only for you, but the population. So it's the prob probability of the intervention is cost effective. That's the uh, vertical axis, sorry. That's a vertical axis. So what it says is, if, for instance, your Bupati or your uh, Walikota or your uh, governor say that, well, actually, as a governor, I'm willing to pay $3,000 to prevent someone dying for cardiovascular disease next year. Because if that person die, then he's not going to remain as the manager of Pabrik Gula, and therefore Pabrik Gula will not produce as effectively and therefore the economy of this city will be harmed. So to prevent that, we want him to stay alive next year. And because we want him to stay alive next year, I'm willing to pay $3,000 uh, for that. Now, if that is the decision, yeah, then it is 90% cost effective, sorry. Um, can you all see that? Can you see my cursor? Yes. So, so this is the $3,000. Yeah. This is $3,000. And if you go up, it's about 90%. Yeah. I hope, I hope that that's quite uh, easy to read um, here. If your Walikota is more generous, I'm actually willing to pay $5,000 in order to save a life as it were. So this is $5,000. And the cost effectiveness is nearly, nearly one or 100%. It's very, very cost effective. So it is very cost effective to put this intervention, a mobile technology in the hands of Kader, in the hands of high school graduates and leave it in the villages so that the process can um, 
uh, work. So let me give you uh, some of the screens that I promised earlier. Uh, this is all in the hands of Kader. Uh, this is not in the hands of doctors only. We bring it very, very low down to the hands of Kader in the villages in, in Malang. Um, so there's Pemeriksaan Tekanan Darah, as you can see uh, top left. Now we ask them about systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, and so on. Um, we also ask them on the bottom left, gula darah, yeah. Uh, in the middle top, we ask them about cholesterol. Um, we ask them about their um, uh, height, their weight. We train all our cutters to, to, to get all this, yeah. And um, here is the feedback. Straight away, the cutter can see on her screen whether the person in front of her has yellow safe level of cardiovascular risk death uh, or amber or uh, sorry, uh, green if it's safe, amber or yellow if it's warning, um, red if it really is critical. Yeah. When, when we launched this in 2018, in Pendopo, uh, in Malang, where, where we invited everybody, uh, Bupati, Kepala Puskesmas, Kader Posyandu, and everybody. I said to them, if Kader Posyandu give you this screen, green, yellow, and red, and if the screen turns red, I said to them, um, this is in Indonesian, Sudah berdamai dengan tetangga, titip anak-anak ke mertua, bayar semua hutang-hutang, siap-siap. So that's what we said, yeah. And of course, two years later, we managed to prevent lots of deaths in in Malang because of this intervention. Okay. So in conclusion, uh, the smart health intervention is cost-effective in saving lives from cardiovascular death. It is a complex intervention uh, with an app in the hands of Kader Posyandu, but we also give them to be done and doctor. Uh, and it is being scaled up. I explained that to you earlier uh, in Malang. And also, I didn't explain a lot to you, but it is being connected to e -puskesmas. Some of you may have heard of that, but um, if you haven't, there is an e -puskesmas and we are integrating it to Ipuskesmas so that all Indonesia can benefit from it. Thank you. Any questions, please uh, go ahead. I'll stop. Thank you, Dr. Regindo. Uh, let's give us uh, applause uh, digitally. So because uh, we couldn't do uh, directly applause, Dr. Regindo. There was a, a quite uh, interesting uh, presentations. Uh, there must be several uh, many questions uh, for Dr. Gindo, but uh, we can we, we do that uh, later on after we hear from the uh, the presentation from Dr. Joko Purwanto, and then we can combine the discussions uh, uh, after the the presentations of Dr. Joko Purwanto. Uh, Dr. Joko Purwanto, are you ready with the presentation? Oh, okay. Uh, let me show. The presentation. Okay. okay. Yes, we can see it clearly, Dr. Joko. <coughs> you can start the presentations. Time is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Adi. Uh, today I would like to uh, present uh, the uh, uh, presentation uh, entitled Artificial Intelligence and its Application in Health Technology. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I would like to deliver the basic uh, knowledge of artificial intelligence. 
so uh, the audience uh, can uh, possibly uh, uh, can uh, expand uh, idea and uh, use uh, and then use the artificial intelligence in a specific application. Uh, first, uh, we just uh, would like to show the uh, activity in uh, my research center or our research center. Uh, as uh, right and above, my research center is uh, artificial intelligence and health technology. Uh, there is uh, there are uh, six uh, activity uh, activity in uh, research uh, include uh, intelligent vehicle and smart city uh, robotics uh, artificial intelligence in business and manufacturing uh, and related to the health technology uh, there are telehealth, uh, intelligent medical diagnosis, and assistive technology and medical rehabilitation. Uh, yes, uh, this is a basic, basic knowledge. Uh, what is uh, the artificial intelligence? Uh, artificial intelligence is a way to make uh, machine thing and behave intelligently. And here, uh, machines are controlled by software inside. So AI has a lot to do with uh, intelligent software that controls the machine. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, science uh, invented many uh, theories and methodologies that can help uh, machines make sense of uh, the word and thus react to situation in the same way uh, humans do. This is a uh, uh, basic of artificial intelligence. And uh, next, uh, actually the artificial intelligence uh, have many ability, uh, ability to sense, uh, ability to uh, reasons, ability to engage, and ability to learn. Uh, in this uh, presentation, uh, we just uh, would like to uh, to uh, explain uh, part of uh, artificial intelligence that is uh, machine learning. Uh, where this uh, machine learning have uh, the ability to to learn just uh, part uh, just uh, part ability of artificial intelligence and uh, inside uh, machine learning there is uh, deep learning uh, this is a type of machine learning in which a learning model perform classification tasks directly from image, text, or sound. Uh, next, uh, <clears throat> after uh, <clears throat> explain about uh, artificial intelligence and one part of artificial intelligence that, uh, that is machine learning, uh, here we <clears throat> Here I would like to uh, uh, explain about uh, machine learning. Uh, in this uh, uh, machine uh, or machine learning, uh, do uh, or work uh, teaches uh, machines or computer to do what is natural for human and animal, namely learning for, from experience. So uh, this ability is limited uh, uh, limited in uh, learning. Uh, 
machine learning algorithm uh, use computational method to learn uh, information directly from data uh, from data uh, without uh, relying on predefined equation as a model and then uh, machine learning algorithm adaptively improve their performance according to the number of sample available for learning enhancement this is a uh, uh, basic of machine learning and uh, in machine learning uh, we have uh, two process two processes that is learning and inference uh, the learning approach uh, generally fo follows structure step uh, first uh, the data set uh, need to be converted into represent, uh, a representation most often in the form of feature uh, that the learning algorithm can use and uh, the, lear the learning algorithm selects a model and efficiently looks for model parameters so uh, here uh, the final uh, purpose is to uh, to find uh, model parameters. This is the learning process, and after learning, uh, we can use the model uh, to 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 do inference. Uh, here, uh, inference generally use an existing model either from learning outcomes or what has been provided. After converting the data into a usable representation, such as a feature factor, the inference process uh, use the model to produce the predicted output. Okay, uh, this is a basic uh, knowledge about uh, machine learning. There are uh, two processes. Uh, learning and inference and uh, in uh, this slide uh, I would like to uh, make a note about uh, machine learning and deep learning as uh, explained above uh, deep learning is part of machine learning uh, but uh, <clears throat> Both of uh, learning strategy uh, have uh, uh, have uh, benefit or uh, yes, uh, as written here, uh, machine learning uh, have a good result with small data set, but. Uh, Deep learning uh, requires very large data set. And uh, in machine learning, uh, have uh, quick to train a model, but uh, in uh, deep learning, uh, computationally intensive. So uh, plus and minus uh, in machine learning uh, and deep learning is shown here. Uh, In uh, machine learning, uh, need to try different feature and classifier to achieve best result. But uh, in deep learning, uh, learn features and classifier automatically. And the last uh, comparison uh, we uh, I can show here: uh, deep learning accuracy is unlimited. This is. Uh, plus uh, point for deep learning. And uh, next, uh, I would like to show the uh, classical problem in uh, machine learning that is uh, handwritten classification. Uh, here, uh, we uh, we must uh, prepare a data set and a model. 
uh, in data set uh, we must collect uh, writing uh, uh, handwritten style uh, of uh, uh, many person uh, and then uh, we put uh, we we set also uh, uh, target target and uh, appear uh, we 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 prepare uh, input output appear for data set on the other hand uh, we uh, we must uh, also prepare the model uh, the mod, uh, mod, uh, model uh, this model will 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 process the uh, input data and then uh, produce the predicted output how to uh, build the model and how to uh, prepare the data set the next presentation will uh, the next slide will uh, explain about this okay uh, <clears throat> model uh, model uh, can be built using uh, of course uh, uh, for uh, computer science or uh, computer science student, uh, they can uh, build the model using uh, computer pro uh, programming, uh, basic uh, programming uh, using uh, programming language, uh, and uh, build the very uh, uh, basic uh, component. But uh, for uh, uh, some uh, uh, people uh, who are not from computer science can uh, can also build the model using uh, machine learning framework. Uh, some big companies uh, offer the framework to build and train the model. Uh, here we show the machine learning uh, framework from uh, Amazon, uh, Google, uh, Facebook, and also uh, uh, Microsoft. Yes, uh, here the promotion of uh, framework. Uh, it's uh, it's of a uh, company uh, want to uh, to uh, to make uh, the framework uh, can be uh, widely used and uh, here we we uh, uh, I uh, I show the uh, the framework uh, first uh, uh, TensorFlow. Uh, you you can uh, find the TensorFlow at uh, uh, web address as uh, right on here. And there is also uh, beside TensorFlow, there is uh, also uh, uh, another framework, uh, Keras. And you you can find the uh, 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 framework uh, from the web address as right in here. Uh, another framework uh, is uh, MXNet and also PyTorch. Uh, MXNet from uh, Amazon, I think, and. Uh, The last PyTorch, uh, this is uh, become more uh, popular uh, right now. And uh, this is a framework that 
uh, can be used to uh, to build model and the uh, <clears throat> beside uh, building model from a framework uh, we can also use uh, the ready to use uh, model uh, like uh, AlexNet here, uh, Inception, uh, VGG, uh, and so on. This is uh, uh, these are the uh, uh, ready to use uh, model. And uh, relating to uh, related to data set, uh, we uh, we can uh, prepare uh, data set. Uh, depend on on application uh, depend on application what uh, that uh, we would like to uh, uh, to uh, build uh, many uh, i mean uh, there is uh, there are three uh, three uh, way to 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 uh, obtain the uh, data set uh, first uh, from self prepare data set uh, second uh, data set that are freely available on internet uh, you can uh, see the uh, uh, pitch, uh, picture in the uh, right side. Uh, here, an example of uh, data set that uh, available freely uh, uh, on the internet. And uh, we can use this data set to, uh, to, uh, to uh, realize the application uh, an application and also uh, we we can use uh, pre-trained model uh, it's mean that uh, the model is ready for use for specific application uh, in principle uh, data set is used for learning process of a model for specific application so uh, if uh, we can find pre-trained model, uh, we can directly uh, use that model uh, without uh, learning uh, without uh, learning process. Just uh, uh, use the pre-trained pre -trained model and we, we, we do the uh, inference process. Uh, one of uh, famous application in uh, machine learning is uh, object detection. Uh, we uh, <clears throat> the basic uh, uh, terminology in 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 object detection. Uh, is shown here uh, uh, for single object uh, we we can uh, classify uh, object uh, as uh, for example uh, here cat or not cat and then uh, we, we we can also uh, class uh, uh, make a classification and localization and uh, in case of multiple object, we can uh, detect uh, uh, what uh, the type of object or the name of object. Uh, in this case, uh, we we uh, we uh, we detect the dog and and cat. 
This is uh, uh, basic terminology of uh, object detection. And I think uh, the application uh, is uh, shown here, uh, where uh, the object detection can detect the object such as uh, truck, uh, traffic light, uh, bicycle, car, and so on. And uh, here the method for object detection. Uh, there is uh, there are two uh, approaches. Uh, first, machine learning, and then uh, uh, deep learning. Okay, uh, in uh, uh, classical machine learning. Uh, there is uh, there are Viola Jones object detection, uh, shift, uh, scale invariant feature transform, its OG histogram of orient, oriented gradient, and uh, recently uh, there is uh, uh, there are uh, three uh, approach, approaches in deep learning. That is RCNN, uh, Yulu, you look. You only look once and SSD, a single shot multi box detector. Yeah. Uh, the object detection application uh, is uh, right here. Uh, optical character recognition. Uh, Self-driving cars, uh, verifying using face and iris code, uh, robotics, and also uh, object tracking and counting. Uh, of course, uh, we can extend uh, the application not only uh, one to five uh, five application right in here. Uh, I think uh, the health uh, technology. Uh, Object detection in health technology. Uh, all, uh, also, uh, object detection can also be applied uh, in uh, uh, health technology. So uh, here we uh, introduce uh, about uh, YOLO. YOLO is one of the deep learning based approach of object detection. Uh, the, object, uh, the object detection algorithm using deep learning can be classified into two groups. Uh, first is uh, classification based algorithm and second uh, regression based algorithm. Uh, you look. Uh, you look on. Uh, you only look once. Uh, use uh, regression based algorithm. Uh, this is uh, 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 detail. <laughs> I, I I would like to uh, skip uh, this uh, detail uh, explanation, and uh, basically. Uh, uh, you look, you look, you only look one uh, use uh, uh, regression based algorithm, and uh, recently become uh, become uh, famous, and uh, many researchers use uh, this uh, this uh, this. Uh, deep learning based approach. And uh, the benefit of this uh, YOLO is uh, very fast and uh, usually uh, it's used in self-driving car and other application where uh, real-time object detection is uh, required. Oh, this is uh, still the YOLO uh, 
explanation. Uh, yes, uh, the yellow detector can uh, predict the class of object, its bonding box, uh, and the probability of class of object in bonding box. Uh, here we uh, we have uh, four uh, parameters that is uh, that are the centers of uh, the center position of bonding box in the image uh, width of bonding box height of bonding uh, width of the box uh, height of the box or bonding box and the class of object and uh sorry okay uh, i would like to skip this uh, slide because uh, this is a detail of uh, yolo and uh, finally uh, uh, the object uh, can uh, uh, detect in in one bonding box after uh, process of uh, non max suppression uh, it's mean that uh, smallest uh, uh, the smallest uh, box will be uh, suppressed and finally we have only uh, one bonding box in the uh, object detected and Okay, uh, this is uh, still YOLO and uh, uh, explanation about YOLO. Uh, here very fast and also there is a light version uh, and fast version uh, with uh, uh, frame rate uh, up, uh, frame rate uh, relatively high, uh, 155 frame per second and and uh, here uh, this object detection is free and uh, open source and uh, here the yolo uh, uh, we we can uh, use uh, a dark net. Uh, this is uh, one of open source uh, neural network framework. One of framework uh, where uh, that uh, serve as the basis of Yulu. Uh, it's fast and easy to install and support CPU and GPU computation. And uh, also we we can. Uh, 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 with darknet uh, is used to uh, framework for training uh, meaning it set the architecture of the network yes uh, at the end of presentation i would like to show the future health technology uh, here uh, from uh, uh, medical futurist futurist magazine uh, uh, to the uh, scoring uh, for uh, available uh, technology right now uh, to to uh, to apply uh, in in health technology. Uh, this uh, magazine uh, try to help uh, to to uh, to make a scoring uh, uh, that uh, became uh, the, the scoring uh, uh, the scoring divide into um, into three thing that. Uh, become real uh, potential impact and accessibility uh, from uh, available technology or develop uh, uh, developing technology right now like uh, uh, 
uh, artificial intelligence, 5G, uh, 3D printing, mixed reality, and so on. Uh, based on uh, scoring, based on total score, uh, it's uh, rank, uh, make a ranking, and uh, as uh, as seen here, uh, the total uh, the, the total score of artificial intelligence for future health technology uh, relatively high. It's mean that uh, uh, this uh, artificial intelligence uh, can uh, in 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 the near future can can be uh, widely applied in, in, in health technology. And uh, of course there is uh, nanotechnology, uh, quantum computing, uh, it's still far uh, from now to be uh, applied in, in health technology. Uh, Yes, uh, in uh, health technology, uh, the artificial intelligence uh, can be uh, used uh, as written here. Uh, first, uh, we, we can use uh, artificial intelligence to efficiently diagnose and uh, reduce error. And uh, secondly, uh, developing new medicine with AI, uh, and then uh, streamlining patient experience with AI, and uh, mining and, man uh, and managing medical data with AI, and finally AI robot assisted surgery. Yeah, uh, this is uh, 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 possible uh, possibility of uh, artificial intelligence application in uh, health uh, technology. And uh, uh, before uh, uh, the end of the, this presentation, I uh, would like to show the research uh, research product. It means that uh, from uh, research and uh, that have potentially to, to be uh, 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 to go to the uh, uh, what is called indust uh, industry. Uh, first is uh, Raisa robot. Uh, because uh, uh, COVID nineteen uh, COVID nineteen period, uh, the requirement of uh, service robot uh, increase. Uh, this uh, service robot uh, replace uh, some of duties of medical personnel. Uh, using this robot, the uh, frequency of contact between medical personnel, personnel and uh, COVID-19 patient can be uh, reduced. This is uh, the purpose of uh, the uh, service robot uh, that use uh, in uh, hospital or healthcare center uh, during the COVID-19. Uh, 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 period and uh, I would like also uh, want to show the one of product from uh, UGM uh, UGM uh, Kinus uh, Kinus is a COVID-19 detection equipment uh, this uh, equipment is a screening tool, uh, not a diagnostic tool for COVID-19. Uh, uh, 
Dinos uh, use the principle of artificial intelligence. Uh, I think uh, it used the uh, machine uh, machine learning approach. Uh, the last, uh, I would like to uh, give a problem. Uh, please uh, guess the data uh, guess the data set used in this equipment. I think uh, from uh, both uh, picture uh, or uh, more uh, detail in in uh, right side right hand side of uh, picture uh, you you can uh, I think you can guess the data set uh, that uh, use in this equipment. Uh, this. Uh, as expressed in, in, in the name uh, nose, it means that uh, uh, it's uh, work like a uh, human nose and uh, the sensor, uh, the uh, here uh, right and uh, uh, genus analyze the volatile organic uh, organic uh, compound so uh, uh, we can uh, guess we can guess that uh, this equipment uh, use uh, odor sensor and uh, the data set is uh, I think uh, data from uh, odor sensor and and uh, situation of uh, patient uh, at that time. Uh, uh, that data from sensor uh, pair with uh, uh, condition of patient. Uh, mean that uh, and uh, and that time uh, uh, for example uh, person one uh, uh, the the result of sensor uh, like this and uh, condition like this person two uh, uh, uh information from other other sensor like this and uh, uh condition positive or negative uh, and uh, after uh, many of data from um, from many person uh, then uh, uh, the learning process for the model uh, 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 we, 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 we do the learning process for the model and then uh, after after uh, uh, parameter of the model fine uh, uh, is two minutes dr joko yes uh, the you have the two minutes remaining time okay. yes uh, uh, after parameters of model phone, uh, finally we can uh, uh, use uh, the model as a uh, uh, inference uh, process. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, our research. Uh, related to health technology uh, in the near future, uh, including uh, include uh, health sensors and telehealth, artificial intelligence and medical uh, robotics. Okay, uh, I think uh, it's all, uh, Dr. Adi. Uh, thanks for your reminder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joko. And uh, that's a quite uh, uh, broad uh, presentations about AI and its applications in the daily use. Uh, so now we we are coming to the uh, question and answer sections. I will check first on the 
online link that has been provided by the committee for the participants to pose uh, questions. And uh, I found uh, uh, two uh, questions uh, from the online link. Uh, first, I would like to read uh, uh, for Dr. Gindo Tampu Bolon. Uh, there are three uh, questions. Uh, this is from, I don't know, this is Miss Miss, maybe Miss Adeline Nepo Muceno from the Lasalle University, College of uh, Liberal Arts, Philippines. It's uh, from the Philippines. Uh, the first question I will read, uh, would, wouldn't internet access be an issue for uh, rural areas? Uh, I think so, because then uh, in the rural areas, uh, the facility for internet access, especially for mobile applications, uh, would be an issue. So that, that, uh, that was the first question. The second one, how long is the entire process of screening the patient to patient getting feedback from the doctor? So that is the second question, Dr. Gindo. And the third uh, question, telehealth and telemedicine have been emerging recently as an alternative instead of going to the hospital or clinics. Are they as effective as going to the doctor and having a face-to-face -face consultations? So that would be the three questions. So would you like to give a feedback, uh, Dr. Gindo? Thank you very much for the question. Uh, you're right that um, digital or internet access in rural areas are limited, and that's why we designed it in such a way that it's in the hands of the cadre, and they can store it on their uh, device, the mobile phone or their little tablet, and they can, if necessary, hold it there until until they get a chance to go to, say, Puskasmas, where there is a better internet connection. Okay. But the data itself is in the hands of the... Um, of the device, uh, yeah. And it can be stored in the device. But of course, with improvement in internet connection over time, this can get smoother to be directly connected to the cloud. Um, the second question... Um, or, or, or the last question is about telehealth. Um, can it replace face-to-face -face so consultations? The second question is how long is the entire process of screening of the patient? The screening, is, the, the, the screening is less than 30 minutes. Um, mm. And it can be stored in the, in the uh, devices I mentioned earlier. Now, for routine ones, the second visit and the third visit, uh, the fourth monitoring, for instance, um, the device give within the 30 minutes or the screening itself, whether the person is still under control. So staying in yellow or turning to green, or if necessary, every month, uh, doctors in Indonesia go to Puskesmas and they can then let um, cases or patients know whether they need to go to um, hospital, whether they need meeting face-to-face, um, -face, or whether they can stay where they are. So there's a flexibility there. And the last, if I'm not mistaken, it's about whether telehealth can replace face-to-face -face, uh, meeting. And this is exactly what we are doing. Namely, um, people in the villages do not need to go to Puskasmas or primary healthcare center uh, on a regular basis. They can stay where they are. The health volunteers in the villages look after them where they are. And we did a randomized trial, which was reported, as I mentioned earlier. Then we found that it is indeed uh, reducing the risk of death from cardiovascular diseases. And therefore, this particular telehealth is effective. I hope okay. that answers the question. Yeah. I, I was wondering uh, for the question number two, Dr. Kindo, how long is the entire process? As I see, I saw from your presentations that there is also an input of the blood pressure 
or uh, how do you call it uh, some measurement from the blood pressure so it means that it's time to take that measurement is that correct yeah we train them half an hour top half an hour tops yeah doing the all the measurements yeah okay that's then, how good they are we train yeah. them and then, and then the device function is uh, storing the input from the cutter yeah and uh, the only one that do the measurement is the cutter uh, himself yeah is that correct yeah oh, okay yeah okay yeah that's uh, people in the village are pre pretty good yeah <laughs> That's a very clear explanation and uh, quite uh, innovative idea, Dr. Gindo. Okay, we can move to the next question. Uh, I think this is uh, for Dr. Joko Purwanto. Uh, I will read first. Uh, this is a quite difficult question, but uh, I hope that Dr. Joko can answer it. Uh, to calculate customer satisfaction statistic, is it possible to use machine learning technology whether by using the object detection features? Uh, <laughs> so maybe you can elaborate a bit, uh, Dr. Joko, uh, for this question. Yes. Uh, AI for calculating the customer satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> customer satisfaction. <laughs> Uh, it's difficult to answer the question. Maybe uh, Doctor Adi can help me uh, because you, <laughs> you 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 are my partner. <laughs> and, uh, I was I was wondering maybe the input uh, interface would be the questions of customer satisfaction, and then the following will be the text mining process to find the the patterns or how to call it uh, the 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 satisfaction score. So that, that would be the general idea maybe, and then that is possible. Uh, but uh, I think by not involving the object detections, so that would be uh, out of topic mm -hmm. for the object detections. Uh, that's uh, my uh, short answer, uh, Dr. Joko. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, we move to the, the third question. So we, we still have several questions here. Uh, first, I would like to read. Uh, according, ah, this is uh, this question is back to uh, Dr. Joko. Uh, according to Dr. Joko, can AI be used to identify mineral characteristics, mineral characteristic in mining explorations? Oh, is there any previous research? Uh, and how the errors, the error system? Mm -hmm. the, this question mm -hmm. from Wahyudin. Uh, from the student of uh, management of technology, ITS. Uh, so that's uh, another tough question, uh, Dr. Joko. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, there are uh, difficult question also because uh, I uh, I don't work in the in the, the mineral mining. and uh, mine, yeah. mine exploration. <laughs> yes, <laughs> mining exploration. So uh, uh, first, I think uh, uh, we we must uh, know the uh, the the characteristic of data. I think uh, after uh, uh, the characteristic of data uh, uh, is uh, found. Uh, we uh, uh, next we 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 uh, we can uh, 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 how to say uh, determine uh, it's is it uh, uh, possibility uh, the possibility to use uh, the AI in in, in that uh, problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think I remember once, uh, Dr. Joko. I, uh, I had one master student who studied the ex, uh, mine, mining explorations and uh, she applied uh, AI uh, to understand the, the structure of the mining. So it, is it a water layer or is it a, a stone layer by using ultrasounds uh, pattern? So 
So I think that is uh, one example that uh, AI can also work in the mining business. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I was. Uh, I'm. I'm going back. I'm going to to have a, to give a question to Dr. Gindo because I was wondering, since you do a uh, research in Indonesia and you collect the data of uh, people of Indonesia, uh, we we would like to know your elaborations about the the ownerships of the data, Dr. Gindo. What do you think about the ownership? I didn't collect the data. Our partners in Malang did it and I didn't take it. Okay, and then that the ownership that would be uh, two hours. Uh, is that correct to Indonesian uh, student? Yes. The the ownership of the data would be in uh, in Indonesian university, right? So it, it's, yeah. It's not, uh, okay. So yeah, okay. So then uh, I think there will be many insights in those uh, data because you collect uh, like three thousand. 30,000 data, if I'm not mistaken, from your present presentations. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. So that's a lot of data. Yeah, so then uh, the uh, prosperity for doing uh, data analysis uh, from your data is also a big uh, opportunity, Dr. Gindo. <laughs> Since, yes, uh, they're doing it now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> As you can see, there are three papers already, and they are doing it. Yeah. Okay. So that's a that's a very nice. Yeah. 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 Because that's include the uh, data science uh, discipline. Yeah. Uh, processing uh, a big data to get a new insight, new knowledge uh, from those data. Yeah. So I think uh, for uh, today's uh, questions, uh, all the presenters. Uh, I have answered all the questions, so I will uh, give uh, open uh, session for the audience or participants in this forum if they want to ask directly to the to both uh, presenters. Uh, we still have like uh, four minutes before we can come to the closing sessions. Uh, I will give uh, an opportunity for audience here in this Zoom sessions to give a questions. Okay, I see. Three uh, participants uh, raise their hand. Uh, first, I would like to give to UP Andre Makpantai. I'm sorry if I don't spell it uh, correctly. Andre Makpantai, you can open up mics and then introduce yourself and, give, and post the questions, uh, Andre. Yes, you can open up the mics. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think you can unmute by yourself. Okay, now it's okay. Okay, okay. okay. Um, I'll just make my question fast. I am Andrew McPantai from the University of the Philippines and I'm from the Humanities Department. So my question is uh, addressed to both Dr. Joko and Dr. Gindo. Um, are there any ethical implications with regards to the technological applications, both from the, to discuss, especially in AI? Um, since ethics is quite a rising topic with regards to the application of technology, especially in health. So are they accepted by people, the community, or are there any other ethical considerations? Thank you very much. That's a very good question uh, from Andre from the Philippines about the ethical issue in applying AI in many sectors, Dr. Joko. Maybe you can uh, give a reply, Dr. Joko. Okay. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, <clears throat> in uh, application of AI uh, in uh, uh, health technology, uh, we we must uh, uh, we must discuss with uh, uh, doctor or uh, from uh, a person. Uh, who in such in uh, medical uh, uh, medical uh, relation and uh, uh, right now we we uh, make collaboration with uh, Airlangga uh, faculty of uh, faculty of 
uh, medicine uh, from Air Langga University and also uh, uh, rumah sakit pendidikan uh, <laughs> education uh, teaching hospital ah uh, yeah teaching hospital <laughs> Ya, teaching hospital rumah sakit pendidikan teaching hospital uh, of Air Langga University and also uh, uh, DR Sutomo University uh, DR Sutomo Hospital uh, I mean so uh, we, we we must uh, collaborate uh, collabor uh, make collaboration uh, with uh, 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 medical related uh, institution yes uh. i think uh, i can give an additional uh, material for the andre i would like to share i i share this to dr joko too uh, yesterday but uh, here we have the report from the Uh, artificial intelligence index report in 2021 uh, andre you I, i can share it to you if you want in chapter 5 uh, they uh, reports uh, many issues uh, especially about ethics in uh, you can see here in the uh, 5.3 ethics at ie in conferences maybe there 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 is uh, information that you look for about uh, ethics issue because It is a really an issue uh, because applying AI in many industry, in many field, many things, uh, of course, it will involve uh, ethics issue. Uh, for example, uh, detecting automatically the face of people in uh, one big database, uh, database for example. Uh, so, yeah, of course, ethics would be an issue in the AI application. That's uh, quite a, a good uh, question, but but also need an effort to, to find the answer. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I, I will uh, move to the second participants uh, who give the raise hand. Uh, the second one would be from ITS, uh, Siva Alina Am Amri. Uh, you can open up the mics, uh, Siva, and then uh, give the questions uh, directly. Uh, Siva, yes. Good afternoon, um, everyone, and Mr. Joko and Mr. Gindo Tampubalan. I'm Shifa from. ITS and I have a question that is more so directed to Mr. Gindo. Um, yeah, if that's okay. So my question is about your this application that you've oh. disconnected. Um, comorbidity. Hello, can you? I think we, we lost several seconds from your questions. If you can start again, start it again. All right. Uh, is my sound? Can do I sound clear at the moment? Yes. Now, now it's clear. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So yeah, my question is directed to Mr. Gindo Tapubolon regarding the current COVID 19 pandemic that strike that struck the world and how cardiovascular diseases is such a common comorbidity. Oh. Um, with that in mind, have there been any developments or adaptations about the technology you've developed con regarding the situation? Thank you. Um, thank you, Sifa. If I understand you correctly, what you are asking, whether the current situation, COVID all over the world, and in particular, that COVID uh, and cardiovascular uh, comorbidities are a fatal combination, whether that makes any difference in our work. I, um, I can briefly say two things. One is um, together with local non-government organization in Indonesia, Kawal COVID, maybe you have heard of that, uh, which is a variation of Kawal Pamilu. And with friends in Kawal COVID, I was last year uh, alerted the government of Indonesia about this situation. So in April, uh, nearly a year ago now, I wrote about the fact that when 
people in Indonesia age 40s with cardiovascular risk as we derived in our papers, they are at higher risk of death from COVID. So we informed government in, in April last year about that. And in particular, we said to, to people who wanted to listen is that if you are age 40 and you have this indicators that we listed, you can consider yourself to be at age 60 in the face of the virus. Your risk of dying doubles. So we, that's one thing that we did. Uh, like I said, nearly a year ago, you can search Google, Kawal COVID, Kindo Tampu Bolon, you can download the report. The other thing that we did is we just got a grant from the Indonesian government. Uh, in Indonesia, there is such a thing called RISPRO with the same team in Malang to look at how we can deploy the same technology in the hands of the cadre to help people in the villages uh, identify those who are at risk and prevent them from succumbing to the virus. So we are, we are redeploying it because ultimately um, we wanted to do it in the hands of people in the villages without people going to, having to go to hospitals which can be hours away from where they are. So yes, we are redeploying it, but that's a separate uh, issue, but thank you for asking. I hope that answered your question. So uh, is it correct, Siva? Is it answer your question? The mic is still off, uh, Siva. Okay, so I think uh, uh, we saw you are uh, agree. You are agreeing that uh, the last explanation from Dr. Gindo has answered your questions properly. Yes. Is that thank correct? You. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you very much. And thank you for your work as well. It's an amazing okay. <laughs> contribution to be making. Okay, so I think uh, we finish all the questions from the participants, Dr. Gindo and Dr. Joko. Uh, we would like to uh, thank you very much for all, for uh, your participations and sharing your knowledge and experience uh, in this uh, afternoon session. So we really hope that this this will give an, uh, uh, really uh, benefits and uh, uh, fruitful information from all the uh, students and participants uh, in this session. So uh, we give applause to the both uh, both uh, speaker uh, this afternoon. Uh, virtually, we can do it also, <laughs> Dr. Gindo. Uh, by the way, how long still you uh, will have to stay in the UK, uh, Dr. Gindo? Will you stay uh, forever or you can you can uh, be back to Indonesia in, in some years? I'll, I'll retire in Yogyakarta. Oh, okay. But yeah. Some years left, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now uh, let's... Enjoy the pound sterling first, yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think uh, for today, uh, discussion, uh, uh, it's, uh, we, we can say it's finished. Uh, and I, I'll give back to the uh, uh, Master of Ceremony, uh, Aulia. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Adi. So here we are. We have finished our agenda today. Furthermore, we would like to present a certificate awarding to our speaker and moderator today. For the first one. This is the certificate for Dr. Gindo. And the second one. Thank you. This is the certificate Okay, thank you. The signature is real from the rector, Dr. Gindo. <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate that. And the last one is Dr. Adi. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, once again, thank you so much. Uh, okay, before we end our lecture today, we invite all participants as well as the honorable speaker and moderator to take a group photo. So for the participants, please open up your camera. We will have a group photo session. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, right, I will count one, two, three. And then for the second slide, one, two, three. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, for the participants, please fill the feedback form through the link bit.ly slash feedback GLS that you can also see on the Zoom chat room. And we also want to remind you, uh, the participants who will get the stem for it is the participant will come on time, change this event until the end and also fill the feedback form. Okay, for the next week, we will have three meeting with some topics. The first one is fostering mental health. And the second one is ensure sustainability consumption and rating of plastic. And the third one is from biomass to biofuels and what's inside. I hope that you can attend this event soon. So finally, we have reached the end of today's guest lecture series and we sincerely apologize for any mistakes we may have made in presenting in this event. And